are you? I'll let you take it away. How are you? Awesome. Okay, well, I am very excited to talk with you guys because as you know, I'm probably not your typical viewer who is sitting here watching this intense movie, but I was really blown away. So first of all, congratulations to all three of you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Now, Matthew, from my understanding, Luke Mogelson wrote an article from The New Yorker about this specific moment in human history that kind of inspired you to want to expand the story to the on screen. So what about this story was important for you to tell it in all Arabic and have actors who are actually tied to the region in some way, despite having a majority American audience. Has this ever been done before? Um, not that I know of. Um, yeah, not that I know of. I don't think so. Um, I, I, it just, I think the uh, audiences are a lot more sophisticated um, and willing to challenge themselves than I think we, we give credit. Um, and, I, and I do think that is that, that, that Netflix um, has opened people's eyes to this in, in, in ways that I, I myself kind of wouldn't have taken into account five, 10 years ago. Um, I, I felt like the only way to do justice to, that, to the story that Luke wrote uh, about these, these men fighting for their homes and their families was to do it in as close to their mother tongue as I could get uh, with people from that part of the world, with, with characters from that part of the world that had lived some version of that experience. Um, and I, I just, I think that's the only way to even hope to be authentic in a story like this anymore. Like the, the, the days of, you know, somebody showing up on screen who kind of looks like me and is gonna save the day, like that's, that's an artifact of the past. And as is the days of like, so maybe I, I cast people from that part of the world, but they all speak with like an English accent and that's the stand in for every foreign language. You know, I, I, I don't think, I, I, and I'm, I'm kind of glad to see those days go because there is such talent and ability in this part of the world that is untapped. And uh, it's the only way to kind of have a hope of doing justice to these stories. Yeah, and that really speaks to um, you as a writer and a director wanting to tell the narrative this way. And I hope you all don't get offended by this in any means. There were points in this film I wanted to turn the audio off because I told you I am not your typical target audience member who's going to see this but I saw it and it was so intense I want to know you know it, it, there are scenes where people are being stabbed and people are being bombed they go from having a cigarette break to then being scared they're going to be gunned down so what was the most difficult scene to shoot as far as from an emotional standpoint and from a technical standpoint. You guys want to go first? Yeah, whoever, whoever you feels could. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that the, um, technically, I think that the, the cafe was probably the toughest. Oh, yeah. Um, just because it was very near the beginning of the shoot. And if you didn't get that right, then, you know, if, if you don't start off on a strong, confident foot, you're gonna play hell trying to, you know, ring people back in. Um, so that was, that was, technically, that was probably the toughest. Um, the, the, the toughest emotionally was the basement, was the, the, the PMU basement where Kawa has to kill his old partner, not necessarily because he wants to get vengeance, but because he wants to not be in a gunfight, you know, uh, in an eye-to-eye -eye gunfight, and this new team that's now his stand-in for a family 
you know, half of them are going to die. Um, that was really emotional. That was, uh, I had doubts about that scene that I didn't have about any others. Like, is this the right thing to do? Um, and I'm glad we did it because it's, it's brutal. And it, uh, but I, I think it's honest. I think it, it, and it shows this young man's commitment to this group that he's still not totally sure of, but this is what it's gonna take to save their lives. Um, and, and so he and, does it. And Adam, speaking about that, your character, Kawa, you know, has such an interesting way of getting introduced into this squadron and, and you know, taking over this role. So why do you think um, Sahil's character, the Colonel, brought him in under his wing? And what do you think, how did you prepare to take on that role? Because that was such an interesting way to be rescued. Why did you go first? Why did you take me on the team? <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need you just like a number, man. Right. That's all. We need the bodies, baby. Yeah. We need bodies, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, no, um, um, yeah, long journey. I mean, uh, I think it's just the uh, circumstances and uh, they happen to be there at the coffee. They saved my life. Uh, in the same time, I'm scared of them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm new to this, like you, when you watch the film. And um, I think it's interesting when you say I'm not the audience because this is really interesting. Uh, like, for me, I think my character was not used to this too, you know, yeah. at all. And he's as uh, scared and as uh, he would like to turn the sound off, but he can't. Right life you know and that's the thing uh that's the thing he cannot turn the image or the sound off he has to go on and that's what uh shocked me in my brain i said okay this is this is where the character started really to 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 get in me you know like there's no way out this is the only way there's one way and it's there and you have to cross it so once you go in this path you discover new things about you you're stronger than what you think. You have more courage than what you think. You're better than what you think. You know, the circumstances in life makes you better. And this, we all witness of this. And this character is really the image of this, I think. And Suhail, with this experience, I think he sees that. He sees the capacity of adaptation. He sees the capacity of, 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 of accepting new challenges and, and, and big responsibilities, you know? Definitely. And, and seeing the human side, I think a lot of people go into military or action films thinking they're here for the big explosions and the Hollywood blockbuster aspect. But this is truly a story of humanism. And um, I, I think it's a really important narrative to tell, especially with, you know, how our world is in 2020 and, um, you know, rising tensions around the world. It really shows a human, real, authentic side that I think a lot of people in America need to see. It's eye-opening. Um, why was that message important for you all to share? And is that kind of the message you're hoping to get across? What are you hoping that audiences take away, especially for people like myself who may have never seen this movie? These people who go into the theater and who are, you know, on Netflix, who end up screening the film, um, what are you hoping that they do take away? Uh, it makes me really happy because that's exactly it. I mean, that is exactly it, that the idea that I got from the article when I first read it that, that has never left me since is that there, there's so much more that unifies us than divides us. And the divisions are almost always man-made um, and are there for somebody to profit from. Yeah. And the, but the, the, the things that matter, uh, a love of family, a desire to be safe, a desire to be proud of where you're from, um, all those mean so much more and are so much more numerous 
than any of the surface divisions. And uh, I, I you know, reading about those people, I thought, my God, I would want and do the very same things. I would hope I would do the very same things, that I would have half the courage that they have if I were ever to find myself in a similar situation. God willing, that never happens. But um, I just, you know, I felt a, a kinship uh, with these people on the page that I was desperate to see if I could, if I could show the same thing to a, a movie going audience. And I do, before I go, um, I, I want to ask you, Sahil, I've briefly read about your personal story coming from the Baghdad College of Fine Arts and then moving to Jordan and trying to find work as an actor. What does it mean for you to play this hero who so bravely fought to protect his land and its people? What does it mean for you to play this role? Thank you so much. The first thing I want to ask uh, to thank Matthew and uh, uh, the filmmaker for this uh, big opportunity for, for me and for all the actors with me and maybe for all the Arabic actor, Arabic country, to give him this opportunity to show uh, all the people uh, uh, around the uh, world, the Arabic, Arabic people, their hero, not the terrorist people, just give him a small part uh, with the suit bomb, like the hurt lock, I remember. I know. Yeah, <clears throat> it was really, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so glad to get this opportunity for me. And uh, Adam too, I think all, all the group, uh, all, all the character, uh, the actors with us, they're so happy to get this opportunity. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, all the producers. Yeah, well, thank you all for speaking with me today. I think you guys are definitely have the ability to change the way that a lot of people view foreign affairs or international relations with this heartwarming story. So thank you guys for opening my perspective and taking the time to speak with me today. I wish you guys the best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure's ours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You thank too. You.